Now that we've seen how to get one of these matrix equations for OD system, uh, we want to make sure we know how to check our solution. Right? So we're next going to learn how to actually solve one of these and get a solution. Uh, but you can, of course, make mistakes along the way, so you want to be able to check your answers. Let's see how that works. Um, it's a lot like what we did with the very first methodology, right? Take the supposed solution, take its derivatives, substitute it into the differential equation, and see if it works out. Uh, the only thing is everything is in vector form, so it might seem a little different or a little confusing to people. So, um, it's the same uh, matrix system we had from the previous methodology, uh, and here is the solution to it. So. Uh, one way to check this is to go back to writing these as separate equations uh, if you're having trouble with the matrix notation. So you think of each row as its own equation. And again, the vector uh, is made up of components. Vector y is made of components y1 and y2. So. so the first row would be y1 equals c1 uh, 2 cosine T plus C2 to sine T. Plus 1. And Y2 equals C1. And then you want to make sure that if you have multiple terms in this, you want to use parentheses that C1 would apply to both. Again, with derivatives, we know that the C1 won't really be a big deal. Three cosine T minus sine T plus C2. Three sine T plus cosine T plus T right, from the vector at the end. And thinking about this, right, the uh, general solution, C1 and C2, is there, and the particular solution is the uh, vector there, right hand side. So, just clarifying, those are the vector components, they're not matrices there. No, everything y hat is equal to, those are matrices. Right, just vectors. So, another question just regarding the forcing function. In in the matrices form, is that a one by two matrices? Um, so we're talking rows to columns, so one to two, right? Um, so you're talking about this part? Yeah. So yeah. So that's it's really just a vector, right? But, but I mean, it's a one by two matrices. Right? You can also think of it that way, yeah. All right. So we're gonna take derivatives of the y one and y two equations. So just normal trig derivatives here, derivative of cosine is the negative sign, and derivative of the sine is the cosine, and derivative of 1 is 0, so that goes away. Not y2, so derivative of cosine is negative sine, derivative of negative sine is negative cosine, derivative of <coughs> sine is cosine, and derivative of cosine is negative sine. And the derivative of t is 1. So we now have the components of the solution function and its derivatives, so we should be able to put this into the V system represented up above. So the derivatives we found in step two are actually going to be the left-hand side of this. And the functions stated in one are going to be on the right-hand side. So really just going to calculate what the right-hand side is and then make sure that it matches up with the left-hand side. So, 
how do we get this? Uh, remember that the first row is found by taking the first row of this matrix and multiplying it by the vector here of the components of y. So we'll do negative 3y1 plus 2y2. Negative 3 times y1. plus 2 times y2 <coughs> plus the 3 minus 2t here so don't forget that part So that's the first row that should actually match up with the derivative of y1 prime. So y1 prime here should actually do that. So if we simplify this, we should be able to get that. Uh, do we see anything that can combine? I actually have these stacked up on top of each other. The c1 cosine terms are like terms. And there's actually a negative 6 and a 6. So those actually will add to 0, right? Um, for C2 sine, there are two terms here, and those will also add to zero because again, this three negative three distributes, so that's going to be six C2 sine two, so negative six, and then this two here distributes to these, so that's going to be positive six C2 sine. So the uh, C1 cosine and C2 sine terms will add to 0. Uh, we also have this negative 3 times 1, so negative 3. And we have a positive 3, so those will add to 0. And then we have a 2, which would distribute to this t, giving you a 2t. That will add up with this negative 2t. That will go to 0. And that only leaves the terms that we want. So you will get the two terms that you want in that first derivative. Um, and we can show how that works. We've got uh, 2 times negative sine. So 2c1 times negative sine gives you that first term. And then we've got 2 times c2 times cosine gives you the 2c2 cosine. So pretty easy to check that. That does, in fact, work out. All right, let's check the other row, and then we should be so with the second row, we're going to take the second row of the matrix, negative 5, 3, and we're going to multiply that with the solution vector. So it'll be negative 5, y1, plus 3, y2. Negative 5 times y1. Plus 3 times y2. Before you simplify the first row of systems, should there be a plus 3 minus 2t after that? No, so the, the plus 3 has a, there's a negative 3 times 1. Oh, okay. That makes that go away. And then there's a 2t that will make the negative 2t go away. All right, 
So, oh, and then there's the uh, 6 minus 3t for the second row. So I forget that. All right, so we're not going to have as much stuff go away on this one. So we're going to be a little more careful. Uh, but we do again have the C1 cosine terms lined up. And we've got negative 10 here. And we've got 9 there. So that would be just negative C1 cosine t. Right? Negative 10 positive 9 is negative 1. Uh, then we've got the C2 sine terms. Uh, so there is another negative 10, right? Negative 5 times 2. So we've got negative 10 there, and then I've got 3 times 3 again. So that's also giving us negative 10 plus 9. So negative C2 sine. Uh, what about the constants? We've got negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, plus 6, so that's actually just a plus 1. And then there is a 3t here that will add up with that negative 3t, so those will go away. Uh, it still leaves the c1 sine term and the c2 cosine term. And you're going to have negative 3 C1 sine t. Right. So we've got 3. 3 times C1 times negative sine. And then we've got uh, 3 times C2 times cosine. 3C2 cosine. And let's just compare that with the second derivative. So see that it just sort of factored the C1 and C2. Those, in fact, do match up, right? One, and we've got the negative cosine, negative 3 sine, negative sine g cosine. So everything checks out. Uh, if you're not opposed to working with the matrix form of the equations, um, you can keep things more in matrix form. Um, but of course, you'll be doing the same thing we just did. So, uh, of course, you can be using some kind of software package maybe to be doing it in this form as well.